doesn't work so well. So let's hope this works right. So the title of this Bible study tonight is Day Versus Night. So I want to start with something very simple for this first Thursday night Bible study, but I want to mention that sometimes the simplest things are made very difficult with religion and false teaching from the Bible. Right? Sometimes things are very easy, but we've heard something our whole life, and we believe that versus believing what the Bible says. So this simple teaching about day versus night is going to lead to a better understanding of very difficult things within the Bible, such as the Passover and the days of unleavened bread. You know, those are all pictures of what happened with Jesus Christ when he was crucified, right? All of those things, and, and knowing day versus night is going to help us understand those things. So that's the topic that we're starting with. This is going to continue into multiple weeks on Thursday night. It's going to get to very difficult things. So I want to start with this simple thing, and this simple doctrine is going to affect many beliefs that people have about many different passages within the Bible. So here's a question for you. So when does a day begin? Think about a 24-hour day. When does a new day begin? Right, I'm talking about a 24-hour day. If I asked every one of you, I would bet that I'd get all kinds of different answers. Okay? So we're going to go through the entire Bible studying this topic for as long as it takes for us to fully understand when a day begins. And there's all kinds of timing within the Bible. There's words related to all different parts of the day through the whole Bible, and it's important to understand those. So I was taught online by many pastors and preachers in the past that a day, according to the religion of Judaism, right, that a day begins at night. They'll say a day begins in the evening at night. So I've even taught that myself many years ago because I thought it was correct. And I trusted those pastors, and I'm sure they didn't teach it wrong on purpose. When I taught it, I didn't teach it wrong on purpose. And I thought I was right, but I was wrong, right? It's easy to admit when we're wrong because I'm just a man, and God's words are the truth. In our words, they don't always match God's words. So the Bible teaches us the truth, and we have to humble ourselves to the Word of God because God knows way more than we do, right? He's been around forever. We haven't. So he wrote it all down in the Bible for us to see and to teach us. So every word of God is important for us to understand, and we have to rely on the Bible alone for truth. So when does a day begin? Is it in the morning when the sun comes up? Is it, as, is it at night as the Jews believe a day begins? Is it when the sun goes down? Is it 12 a.m. midnight as the current tradition in our country? Or is it in the middle of the day? Is it morning, evening, afternoon? What would you say? So we're going to go through the Bible and we're going to see what God says. And we just read it in Matthew 28, verse 1. Here's a big clue for you. And, and to me, this is one of the best verses in the Bible that tells you when a day begins. Matthew 28, verse 1. We have scriptures on the screen or you can turn in your Bible. Matthew 28, 1, the Bible reads, In the end of the Sabbath... So we slow down and we look very closely at the scriptures. I love this verse. It says, in the end of the Sabbath, this is the day that Jesus arose from the dead. That day is coming. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So if you look at that closely... You understand what I'm saying here. Every word of God is profitable for doctrine. So that scripture right there is 100% truth, and it came straight from the mouth of God Almighty. So I've read that verse scores and scores of times before, and I'm sure you have too. So this is the day that Jesus arose from the dead. One of the greatest days in existence is when Jesus arose from the dead. But look closely there. So my job here is to take the Bible 
and give you simple truths from God's Word. That's my job, and that's how we learn, and that's how we remember things. This is how we grow in our faith in God and His words. It says, in the end of the Sabbath. That's what it says right there. So we know this is resurrection day for Jesus Christ. We know He arose from the dead on the first day of the week. We know that. So we know that the Sabbath day is ending. Right? You see that. The Sabbath day is ending, as the Bible says, in the end of the Sabbath. So which day is the Sabbath day? Because that day is ending according to Matthew 28, verse 1 right there. Genesis, which day is the Sabbath day? Genesis 2, verse 2, the Bible says, And on the seventh day God ended His work which He had made, and He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it He had rested from all His work which God created and made. So now the first use of the word Sabbath in all the Bible, it isn't until Exodus chapter 16. That's the first time you see Sabbath within the Bible. We don't see the word Sabbath right there in Genesis chapter 2. But we know that God created everything in six literal 24-hour days. God did that. Could He have done it faster than that? Oh yeah, He could have, he could have done it like this with a thought. But he did it in six literal 24-hour days. He designed everything this way, and he did it perfectly. And on the seventh day, he rested. The seventh day is the day of rest, according to God Almighty. That is the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week. So we have a seven-day week right now. Why do you think we have a seven-day week? So it goes all the way back to God's creation. God created the seven-day week, and it's still going strong, isn't it? So Sunday's the first day of the week. Sunday's day number one, Monday, second, Tuesday, third, Wednesday, fourth, Thursday, fifth. Friday is sixth, and Saturday is the seventh and final day of the week. So the Sabbath day would be the seventh day, which would be a Saturday. So Jesus arose from the dead on the first day day of the week. We know that. The first day of the week is Sunday. We worship on Sunday. So let's look at the first use of the word Sabbath in the Bible. And this is very important. I want you to see this. Exodus 16, verse 22. The Bible reads, And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. This is when God gave them manna. So on the sixth day He told them to gather twice as much bread. Why is that? Because they couldn't do anything on the seventh day and they needed that food for the seventh day. It says, Two omers for one man and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses and he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. The Lord said this. He says, Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. He said, Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord Bake that which you will bake today, and see that you will seethe, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until when? It says to be kept until the morning. That's the next day. Just wanted you to see that. So the Bible says there in verse 22, it says that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Verse 23 says, Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. So that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. The next morning is the Sabbath day, not the previous night. It's the next morning is when the Sabbath day begins. So the Sabbath day is on the seventh day. It is not on the sixth day. Saturday is the seventh day. Saturday is the Sabbath day or seventh day. Sunday is the first day of the week. So let's think about that question again. So when does a day begin? When does a 24-hour day begin? Matthew 28, 1 again says, In the end of the Sabbath, 
as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So when do you think they came to see the sepulcher? If you read the other gospels, they came very early in the morning. So the Bible, the word of God, straight from the source of, source of all truth, says as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. The Bible says in the end of the Sabbath, the Sabbath day is ending and the new day is beginning. So the seventh day is ending. So when did the seventh day end? It was early, it was that next morning when the sun's coming up, the seventh day's ending. So the first day of the week's here, it's dawning towards the first day of the week. So what does it mean when it says dawning toward the first day of the week? So the definition of dawn, D-A-W-N, according to the oldest English dictionary, it's right here. What is that definition? It says the time between the first appearance of light and the sun's rise, reckoned from the time that the sun comes within 18 degrees of the horizon. And it says beginning or first rise. So dawn is the time between the first appearance of light and the sun's rise. So dawn means beginning or first rise. So the beginning of the first day of the week is here. The sun, S-U-N, the sun that gives us light throughout the day. That's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a picture of him. Malachi 4 Verse 2, watch what this says. It says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, and it's spelled S-U-N, the Son of Righteousness, arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So notice that's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son, S-U-N, of Righteousness. He will arise, the Bible says. So, Personally, I believe that Jesus Christ arose from the dead that first day of the week as the sun arose on that first day, in that morning. So the light of the world arose from the darkness, from the dead. Hey, everything God does is perfect. His entire creation is a picture of things. For example, the sun is warm. It can be comforting. It can help us. It gives us vitamins. But what else can it do to you? It can destroy you too, right? I've been burned many, many, many times. I've had skin cancer because of the sun. So the sun is warm. You know, it can be calming to you or it can destroy you. Same thing with water. You know, you go to ocean, you go to the beach. I love going there. It's relaxing when the water is calming. Like in the Gulf Coast, it's usually calming. But then the water can destroy you as well, right? God, same thing with wind. Wind can help you or wind can hurt you very badly. So the Sabbath day ended. We know that the Sabbath day ended. And then right after that, Jesus arose from the dead as the sun arose on the first day of the week. So let me make sure I've explained this correctly by asking you that question again. Right? You've seen what the Bible is clearly teaching, and I promise you this is through the whole Bible. Like I've done this study through the whole Bible multiple times, and the whole Bible, I could show you tons and tons of scriptures that teaches this same thing. So when does a day begin according to the Bible? When does a day begin according to Matthew 28 verse 1? It's telling us that, it, that a day begins in the morning. So I want to show you this Jewish day versus a biblical day. So the religion of Judaism today, it teaches us that a day begins in the evening, at night. So as you can see on the top there, you see Saturday. That's a Jewish day. It's saying Saturday begins on what we would call Friday night. So when Friday approximately 6 p.m. comes, the religion of Judaism says Saturday has begun, and they start their Sabbath day on Friday evening or Friday night, which they call the start of Saturday. And that's what you see on the top there. So their day starts 
with darkness. According to the Bible, a day starts with light. So look closely at that, and it's very confusing because in our world, we all go to sleep, and then when we wake up, we say it's a new day, right? That's when the day begins. The day doesn't begin at night, but that's what a lot of people teach, right? I've been taught that over and over. I've taught that before, but the religion of Judaism is a false religion. If you ask many of them, they would tell you that they hate the Lord Jesus Christ, and if they had the chance to kill him again, that they would kill him again. That's what they say. So they're backwards when it comes to day versus night because they are children of the night. So their day begins at night. So what's a biblical day look like? A biblical day looks like that. Friday begins in the morning and ends the next morning. Saturday arrives that next morning when the sun comes up, Sunday begins when the sun comes up. The day ends when the darkness is over. But in the religion of Judaism, if you ask them if they're good, they'll tell you that they're good, right? They'll say, why, like, why are you good? They'll say, because we keep the Sabbath day. For example, I worked for GE Appliances before, right here in Louisville. And we would make refrigerators, we would design refrigerators with Sabbath mode. And it would turn certain things off in the refrigerator because that would help them to supposedly keep the Sabbath day. Right? They would turn off the compressor, they would turn off this or this because they thought that was helping them to keep the Sabbath day. But the truth is, in the religion of Judaism, and I'm telling you right now, they don't keep the actual Sabbath day because the Sabbath day starts on Saturday morning and it ends when Sunday morning begins. They start theirs on Friday night and they end it on Saturday night. So automatically they're not biblically keeping the Sabbath day. They don't keep the Sabbath day physically and they don't keep the Sabbath day spiritually. So they don't physically keep it because they can't get the timing right. And are you actually telling me that they always have kept the Sabbath day, like they've never did any work on any of their so-called Sabbath days. Would you believe them if they told you that? Like, would you believe me if I told you I've never lied before? Well, you wouldn't believe me, right? They haven't always kept the Sabbath day, and they actually, they started early and they ended early, and that means they physically break the Sabbath. So they don't keep the Sabbath spiritually because they believe they must keep the physical Sabbath to be good and to earn their way to heaven, right? That's what they're thinking. They think they have to do those physical works to be good. So the entire point of the Sabbath day is Jesus Christ. So we rest in Jesus Christ, right? That's how we rest. He is our rest. We're only saved by Jesus Christ. We aren't saved by keeping the commandments such as physically keeping the Sabbath day and doing no work on Saturday. Right? The whole Bible's te that's not what saves us. So Jesus is our rest, he is our savior, he is our Sabbath. Matthew 11 verse 28, Jesus says, "Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." Jesus says, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when we know that the weekly Sabbath begins in the morning on Saturday, then we know that the religion of Judaism, they're not keeping the Sabbath, and we know others that say they keep the Sabbath and they don't keep it like Seventh-day Adventists. They think that we're evil, that we've taken the mark of the beast because we worship God on Sunday. They say, you all can't even get the Sabbath day correct. It's Saturday, not Sunday. We didn't say Sunday was the Sabbath day, did we? We worship God on Sunday. So we know that those people, they're saying they're keeping the Sabbath. We know that they're not perfect. 
So even if they got the day right, they still haven't kept the Sabbath their entire life. Right? And you offend in one point, you're guilty of all the Bible says. So I ask people when out preaching the gospel, say, what do you personally believe it takes to get to heaven? I don't just go straight at them and say, hey, what do you think it takes to get to heaven? I say, no, hey, what do you personally believe it takes to get to heaven? If a friend asked you, what do I got to do to get to heaven? What would you tell them? So some people will say, well, you got to keep the commandments, right? So let's look at one of the Ten Commandments in the Bible. So you got to keep the Ten Commandments. Many people have told me that before. Exodus 20, if you know where the Ten Commandments are, Exodus 20 is where they're at. Exodus 20, verse 8, the Bible says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Verse 11 says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the commandment is, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. So you better, if you think you're keeping the Sabbath day, then you better get the seventh day correct, right? Wouldn't you think that's a big part of it? If you think you're keeping it, you better get the day right. And I'm telling you that the seventh day starts in the morning on Saturday and ends when the morning comes on Sunday. But the Jews don't believe that, and they've led other people to not believe that. Like, they've led me to not believe that several years ago in my life, Seventh-day Adventists don't believe in the right Sabbath day. So they're not keeping the Sabbath day because they can't understand the Scriptures. Matthew 28, 1 tells them the truth. So I ask the people that tell me that keeping the Sabbath day gets them to heaven. What do I say to them? I say, have you always kept the Sabbath day? Anybody that tells me their works are getting them to heaven. Like I've had people from Russia tell me, hey, well, I have to pray. I got to get on my knees every night and I have to pray and ask God forgiveness. I always say, you just told me you have to pray every night and ask God forgiveness every day of your life. And I get them to say that. Same thing with the Sabbath day keepers. Have you done that your whole life? You just told me that's what you got to do to get to heaven. Have you done that? And they say, no. I say, where are you going then? Right? You haven't kept all the commandments of God. So by their own admission, they aren't going to heaven. They just told me what it took, and I say, well, you haven't done that. You just told me that's what it took. They say, well, they start changing it on me, right? They say, well, yeah, I've, and Muslims do that too. They'll say, well, I have to pray every day this amount of times. Say, have you done that every day? They say, no. So you just told me that's what it takes to get to heaven. They say, well, that's not what it really takes. God will forgive you and all. Well, then that's not what it takes then, right? You just changed it. So these false ways to heaven, they don't make any sense and they're always changing. So keeping the commandments of God cannot be the way to heaven. How many people would be in heaven if we had to keep the commandments of God to get there? How many people would be there? The Bible tells us there would be none. No one would be there so that can't be the way to heaven because we know people that are in heaven. The Bible tells us who went to heaven. For example, Hebrews 11 tells us who had faith in God. For example, Samson. I know Samson is in heaven. He wasn't the greatest man alive, was he? He ended up killing himself. He pulled the building down on himself. That's called killing yourself. He knew it was going to happen. And guess what? He's in heaven because he had faith in God. Because it's faith alone that saves you and sends you to heaven. So we should do our best to keep the commandments, but our effort 
does not get us to heaven. It's the effort of Jesus Christ that gets us to heaven. It's only Him and no one else. So I wanted to show you how important it is to understand when a day begins. So does the day begin in the morning, at noon, in the evening, or at midnight? I want to show you one more scripture here. We're going to continue this study into the coming weeks. So I want to go back to the first time the word Sabbath is in the entire Bible and see if this makes perfect sense. Now that you know a day begins in the morning when the sun comes up, the beginning of the light is the beginning of a full 24-hour day. So a full 24-hour day ends when the darkness ends, right? You get the day beginning with the light. The light ends, the darkness comes. When the darkness ends, that full 24-hour day is over. And Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in a day? He says, we work in the day, right? We work during the day, we rest at night. So a full 24-hour day ends when the darkness ends. And you can go back to Genesis. I'm not going over that in this sermon here, but it says in the evening and the morning or the first day, I used to think that meant, well, that means evening's first, night is first. That's not what it's saying. The point when evening comes, God worked in the daytime. When evening comes, that's the point darkness comes. When he says in the evening, that's when darkness comes. And the morning, that's the finishing of the first day. And the evening and the morning were the first day. He worked in the daytime, then he rested in the darkness. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So morning is the point of light. Evening is the point of darkness. Morning means light comes. Evening means darkness comes. From morning to evening... There is light. From evening to morning, there's darkness. And God made it this way. It's very important to understand that. So a full 24-hour day, it doesn't begin at night. That's just silliness after you see it through the whole Bible. A full 24-hour day begins in the morning. Exodus 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said tomorrow... And if you look up the definition of morrow, it means the next day in the morning. It says, tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. He doesn't say tonight. And that's in the Bible too. They know what tonight means. It says, tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today and see that you will see. Then that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And I laid it up till the morning, as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. So they could work on the sixth day. They couldn't work on the seventh day or the Sabbath day. They had to gather twice as much manna on the sixth day, because tomorrow is the rest of the Sabbath unto the Lord, not tonight. So they were to keep it to the next morning. The next morning is when the Sabbath day began And they were not allowed to work that next morning on the Sabbath day. Exodus 16, verse 24. I'm going to repeat this and go to verse 26. And they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find in it the field. Six days ye shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. So when the next morning came, what does Moses say in verse 25? He says, eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. So understand that the Sabbath day didn't come until the next morning came. Not the previous night, like the Jewish calendar says today. They're trying to keep it from night to the next night, no, as the next morning is when the Sabbath day began. Moses says so right there. And these are the holy scriptures written through the Holy Spirit of God. And they kept the Sabbath correctly right there. Do you think Moses got it wrong? Moses didn't get it wrong right there. Other people in that chapter got it wrong. They went out and they started get, trying to gather. They broke the Sabbath. Moses had it right here. So the one thing I want you to take away from this Bible study right now 
is that a day begins in the morning. And yes, that's simple, but a lot of people, me, if you would ask me that a few years ago, I said, oh no, a day begins at night. I asked my wife that, and she's like, what are you talking about? I always thought a day began in the morning. So some people had it right. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's logical. A day begins the next morning. So understand that the vast majority of churches will teach that a day begins at night because this comes from the false religion of Judaism. It is not a biblical teaching. Now, do some Sabbath days in the Bible begin at night? The weekly Sabbath begins in the morning on Saturday. Well, there's a few days that are special days that begin at night. And that's what we're going to get to in the future. But for example, the Passover begins at night, begins in the evening. But not every weekly Sabbath day begins in the evening. So Judaism, it's a false religion. It's a very dark religion. And that religion, what does it do? It produces children of the night and not children of the day. And that's why I believe they believe a day begins at night, because they're children of the night. 1 Thessalonians, last scripture here, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 4, and you probably remember this. It says, but ye, brethren, talking about knowing the timing of the resurrection or the rapture, it says, but ye, brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So the scriptures are light. The scriptures tell us the truth. That's where we find all truth. Right? If you ask me, I wouldn't argue with people hardly ever in my life until I know the truth in the Bible. When the Bible's very clear about something and it's, it's taught from the beginning all the way to the end, we know the truth and it's time to contend for the truth, contend for the faith. So all of this works together in the Bible to give us the knowledge we need to take the right path in this life. And you're going to find that simple doctrine of day versus night, you're going to need this to help you understand so much more of the Bible. Like if you believe a day begins at night like I used to, I couldn't ever get the timing of the Passover, the days of unleavened bread, all of those feasts of the Lord, it doesn't work, right? It will not work and it's very confusing. When you get it right that a day begins in the morning, all of that stuff comes together and it works perfectly. And, and that's why we're starting with this here, day versus night. And I'm going to show you how it's everywhere within the Bible. With that, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you so much for letting us see the truth in Matthew 28, verse 1. We trust your words, and we know that your words are the truth, and we know that you've magnified your own word above your own name, and we're going to do the same. We're going to put your words first. Just thank you for showing us the truth. Please teach us the truth as we go from there. Help us to get things right. We love you so much. In the name of Jesus, we pray.